let's take a look at Studio One Three's quarter device. And this is a utility device and part of the NoteFX plugins used to manipulate MIDI performances in real time, or it can also be applied to a MIDI part after it's already been recorded. The quarter is used to create chords from single notes played on an external controller or from within uh, a MIDI part that has MIDI notes uh, contained within it. And we can access the quarter by opening up our instruments tab and opening the NoteFX folder or by opening it from the inspector and using the NoteFX panel. So if we come to our instruments tabs here, then we can see we have NoteFX. If we open that up, we've got the quarter there. We can also, if I close out the browser and open up the inspector, we have the NoteFX panel and we can click this plus symbol and then add the quarter that way as well. Now I've got a presence loaded on this instrument track and I just have a Studio Grand loaded that is now making use of the quarter. If I go ahead and deactivate that, then we'll hear that. Uh, there is no chord effect happening when I play single notes uh, on the keyboard. And I'm just going to go ahead and put this here on top of the present so that we can see exactly what's going on and we can take note of our virtual keyboard on the presence and we have a couple of different keyboards here that will allow us to monitor what's going on as well now let's take a look at the different parameters within the quarter and we're going to take these one at a time starting with the top we have this power where we can activate and deactivate the quarter we'll go ahead and turn that on next we have an area for storing replacing loading importing exporting presets and this is important to make use of. If you want to go ahead and manually create some of your own chords, you'll want to come here and then uh, store that as a preset. We then have a selection of presets that come from Personas that we can choose from. We've got chord groups, chord types, and intervals. So if I expand out the chord groups here, we have a variety that we can choose from. I'll go ahead and choose this diatonic minor chord group. And then now that we have that loaded, if I play single notes on my keyboard, then you'll see that these are now going to trigger chords. And if you notice here, on the virtual keyboard for our presence, we are seeing those chords being played. So the quarter is going to sit in between your MIDI controller and the presence. And this bottom keyboard will show the single notes that we're playing, but after it leaves the quarter, um, we're gonna see those chords being played on the virtual keyboard below here. Let's take a look at one of the other folders here. That's chord groups. We've got chord types. So I can choose a major seventh. We can work with intervals. I'll close this folder up and then let's just take a look at octaves. This is a pretty simple and straightforward. We're playing an octave up uh, two notes when we play our single key on our keyboard we then have an octave up played within the quarter now within this device we're presented with two virtual keyboards the bottom one uh, as I mentioned shows which keys are being played on our external controller as well as allowing us to audition uh, the program chords we can also use our mouse to click these keys and audition the chords this way as well The upper keyboard will also show us the key we're playing on our keyboard, but also the other keys or notes that are assigned and playing back our program chords. If you were to play a key on your controller keyboard that is not a part of the proper scale for what you've chosen in the uh, presets, then this will be moved up or down by a semitone. And let's take a, a look at that. Uh, if I come back to the chord groups and come back to this minor chord, now as I play, 
And this is actually a perfect example. So I'm triggering A on my external controller. But if you take note at the upper virtual keyboard here, it's being dropped down a semitone to uh, G sharp here. And then now, as I play B, we are uh, having B played because it's part of the scale for this chord. Now this orange bar up at the top is going to dictate which keys on our external co uh, controller will have chords assigned to them. So if we expand this out, we can then allow more keys on our keyboard to trigger chords. Of course, they do need to have chords assigned to them and these do not, so we're not gonna actually have any audio. If I play back, I'm on C1, so if I played a little bit lower on my keyboard, then you can see we are now triggering those, but there are no chords assigned, so we have no playback. So as we just saw, we can click and drag to expand these out. We could also come to this these fields here and click and manually enter in a key. We could also play a key on our keyboard and it will fill those in for us. And we can also adjust this range by clicking and dragging the whole bar at a time. Moving on, we've got these squares that are in the center of our two virtual keyboards. And these squares represent chords that have been assigned to the individual keys, at least when we see the uh, solid squares here. We do have other hollow squares, which will represent keys that will play a chord if triggered, but these chords have been auto-filled. Uh, what does that mean exactly? If we come back to our octaves, and then we can see here we only have one solid square within this group, and the rest are hollow. So we have this autofill, which is uh, active. If I deactivate that, then we can see we only have one key, C3, which has a chord assigned to it. The rest of them that showed up were only there because of the autofill. So if I play C3, then we have our octave. But if I play any of the other ones with autofill deselected, then we have nothing. Uh, now, since we have our range selected, when I go ahead and reactivate autofill, then it's going to create chords for the rest of the keys within this range that we have selected. And if I actually change this range, then we'll see that as I play outside of that range, our chords are now gone. And we also have this filter outside. So if I select this, then even if I play, you'll note that the keys are highlighting, but we have no sound when we're playing outside of the range. So that's what the filter outside is. If you uh, just want to be sure that no audio is produced when you're working outside of the range that you have selected, uh, choose the filter outside. We also have a transpose, and this will basically transpose the keys that we're playing by octaves. So if I go ahead and I'll play back. So this is where we're at for our C3. If I go ahead and say put one in here, raise that up by an octave when I play C3 again. So that is the transpose. Now finally, how can we go about creating our own chords? and creating some of our own presets. Now, in order to do this, we would need to activate the learn mode. And then we can see that whichever key that we press here in the virtual keyboard, we can see what chords have been assigned to it. We can also do this by pressing. I'm lying to you here. So if we press a key while we're in learn mode and we have a key selected, then we're gonna add that key to our chord. So if I then deselect learn, and now when I play C3, we have those additional notes that I've added to our chord. 
So I'll activate learn mode again, select C3, and we can then click to remove those. We can also play the key on our keyboard to remove those out as well. And we'll go ahead and put this back to an octave, and so I'll select C4. And before we exit learn mode, just be aware that we can copy, and then if I select this key here, we can paste. We can also clear and clear all. So I hope that it's clear now that the difference between these hollow squares and the solid ones, and the solid will have chord information programmed into it, and the hollow ones basically are only active if we have autofill selected. So if I deselect this, I can then choose another key here and then play some keys on my keyboard and then assign those to key B, exit learn mode, and then we can then play back that chord that we've assigned. And we know that it has information there because we've got the solid square there. So I'll come back into learn mode and let's get rid of these and turn our autofill back on, exit learn mode, and I'll actually disable the filter outside, and we should be back to as we were with our octaves.